Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these really cool uh, stream overlay sponsors, kind of added text kind of thing. You might have seen it on people's streams before, they look really nice and uh, yeah, they're a really good way of just fitting more information into a small space. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to show you one more time and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. In this tutorial, I'm not going to be showing you how to make the actual uh, banner background, well, the, um, the stream overlay background itself, just because I've made a few tutorials on that in my past and um, yeah, so you guys can go check that out if you need to. But uh, I will be using the Nade Shot stream overlay that I made a speed out of the other day. Well, not the other day, probably about the other week. But um, yeah, so you guys can go check that out as well. So um, this is what we'll be starting off with. If you don't have this um, this timeline at the bottom, uh, all you need to do is click on this drop down menu at the top right corner and go to Motion. I think you might already be on Essentials, which would be like this is just the usual Photoshop. So what you can do is you're going to click on Essentials and then go to Motion. And uh, yeah, so now you'll see they have this timeline. Um, I, I actually deleted all the anchor points for this version, so I actually haven't done anything to this one yet. And I'm going to show you guys how to make it so that it will turn out like this one that I've shown you already. And uh, yeah, so um, all you need to do is the, to start off, uh, what you, I mean, what you will need before this tutorial is the banner background or the stream overlay background. They'll be being the text and the logos onto and the logos itself so as you can see here uh, let me just group all of this so don't worry about all of this so this would be the um, stream overlay so yeah don't worry about the stream overlay and then this would be the logos and the text which is what we're going to be fading in and in and out so um yeah so first off we want to do is we want to make this bottom section a bit larger just because you, you will have a few layers here and it'll be a lot easier to work with if you can just see them all at once so um yeah so this timeline if you've never used the timeline before it'll be really easy for you to get used to if you've used um adobe after effects before or premiere pro or anything like that this is kind of similar in the way in which it works you can see it has all these little clock icons which you would recognize if you used after effects before but if you haven't used that any of those programs before then you don't need to worry you this will be a pretty simple tutorial for you to follow anyways but um yeah, so as you can see, we've got all of our layers on the right here, and all the, all of these layers all have their own, well, uh, pretty much their own space in the timeline. As you can see here, if we select one of these layers, we're selecting a different layer in the timeline as well. So it's really easy to work with, actually, and um, it'll be really easy to get used to. And uh, yeah, I think I got, I started using this, well, I learned how to do this yesterday, so it's really not that hard. And uh, yeah, I literally just found out by fiddling around and just, yeah. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is we need to make sure that uh, nothing is present at the very beginning. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to select all three of our layers right here. We're going to uh, click on the drop down menu for each of them. So we're just going to click on the drop down menu, scroll down. And uh, you can just adjust your how big you want the timeline just by clicking at the top. And then you can actually scale. Uh, how big you want it. So once we've clicked all the drop down menus for all of our uh, logos, what you're going to do is you're going to go to opacity here and you're going to click on the little stopwatch and you're going to do that for all of them. Okay, so also you want to make sure is that you want to make sure that this timeline, I don't really know what to call it, but um, you want to make sure that you're at the very beginning of your timeline. So you just want to drag this like little line, you want to drag it to the very beginning and uh, at the very beginning we want to make all of these not visible so to do that we want to select all of our um, all of our layers of the logos and then go to opacity and then put it down to zero percent and now you can see that actually made a little diamond on all of the layers timelines and that basically that diamond is a keyframe so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to 20 frames and uh, we're going to change the opacity to 100 percent and now you can see it added another diamond which is another keyframe. So as you can see now, when we go to the start, they're not visible. And then when we press play, they will become visible just because the keyframe tells it to. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's really that simple. It's really that easy to get used to, but uh, it just might take a little bit of time. Okay, so now we've done that, now we need to decide how long we want these logos to appear for. So I probably want it to be about here, so that'll be fine. And um, so we can see that it takes 20 keyframes for it to appear and we want it to be, take 20 keyframes for it to disappear so we want it to finish here so what we need to do is we need to go 20 frames forward to here 
and then change the opacity down to 0%. Now we need to go 20 frames back again and then change the opacity to 100%. And now when we go to the very beginning again, press play, now we can see it fades in, then it will go across the timeline and it will take 20 keyframes to fade out again. And we've already done the logos, it is really that simple. It just might be a little bit daunting at the very beginning, but it is actually really easy to do. And uh, yeah, so um, now that we've done that, we're going to go to, now we need to edit our text in. So we're gonna click on the little eye to show it. And uh, now you can see that you can see the text in there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the drop down menu again. And we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did for our logos, but for the text. And we actually don't want it, but we don't want it to be visible while the logos are there. So what we need to do is we need to click on, well, we need to go to the very last point that we had our logos at, then go to opacity, and we need to click on the little stopwatch to uh, add keyframes to our text. Make sure that the opacity starts on 0% for the text, and now you can see that there won't, the text won't be, uh, it won't be visible while the logos are there. And um, we need to go 20 frames forward because we want it to take 20 keyframes for it to fade in. So just make sure it's on a, the opacity is got the stopwatch on and we've got our first keyframe here go 20 frames forward and then we want to change the opacity to 100 percent and now you can see that it's actually visible now and uh, so let me just show you the whole thing now so our logos fade in then it has this period where the logos are there and it fades out and then the text fades in and uh, now we want to uh, decide how long we want the um, the text to be there for if we, if we wanted to, we can actually lengthen out the, um, the the layers on the timeline if we did want it to make it a bit longer. So you just might, you just might want to do that. And um, yeah, so let's just do that real quick. Okay, so now you can see we've just lengthened out our timeline. It gives us a bit more room. And uh, now we can decide how long we want our text to be there for. So I might want my text to start disappearing at this point here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 20 frames forward. And then we're going to make sure that our text layer is selected. Go to opacity, make it 0%. Then go 20 frames backwards again. And um, then make sure the opacity is on 100%. And then you can see it will take 20 frames there to fade out. So that is pretty much it for the keyframing and animation. So what we're going to do is go to the start and I'll show you guys how it, uh, how it looks. So uh, I'm just going to press play. You can see they fade in then they're gonna fade out and then the text will fade in and then the text will fade out here. And actually, <laughs> I think the background also faded out. So uh, I think I might have made a mistake. Um, oh right, yeah, because I didn't extend the stream overlay. So you might wanna open this layer and then we need to extend all of these as well. <laughs> That was my bad. So um, just make, you want to make sure they extend all of your layers, not just some of them. Otherwise, obviously, you'll get the error that I just got, and I made myself look like an idiot. So <laughs> yeah. So once you've done that, if we want it to fade out, and then we want to make sure that these all these layers end at the keyframe that we just the last keyframe. So we're gonna we're gonna shorten all of these layers just so they will end at the same time. And then we'll need to export it, and I'll actually show you guys how to export it as a GIF file and uh, not a PNG, just so we'll get it in the best quality and it'll also fade in and out for when the streamers want to add it to their streams. Okay, so to do that, you can see now that we've got all of our animation, and uh, what we're going to do now is going to go to File and Export and then Save for Web. You should have already be doing this when you're saving as PNG, but um, instead of use Instead of saving it as a PNG, we're going to save it as a GIF. So um, it's basically the same way. And uh, yeah, so it should say PNG 24 here. This should be what you usually use. But we're going to click on the presets and then scroll up. And we're going to go to GIF 128 Dithered. And um, yeah, so once you've done that, you want to make sure that transparency is checked. It's just going to load the, the preset real quick. So we might just have to wait for that. And there we go. So um, you want to make sure that transparency is checked. And uh, yeah, so you can see that we haven't actually lost any quality. Uh, sometimes if the design cam is a bit too complicated, you can lose some quality in the design. But um, yeah, it looks pretty fine for this so far. And uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that looping animations is on forever. 
because if it's on once, then when the streamer starts the stream, it will literally the the overlay will literally fade in, fade out once, and then it won't go again. So you need to make sure that this is on forever. And um, yeah, so once we've done that, we can just press save, and it's really that simple. We can just save it to however we want. So this was the overlay that I did for Nature. So we're just gonna press save, and we'll just replace that one. And uh, yeah, so it's really that easy, guys. It's it's, it might get a bit of use to, getting used to it, it's pretty daunting when you first look at it but uh, it, it really would pay off and it uh, really adds a cool effect to your to your overlays and uh, yeah so thank you guys for watching if you did find this tutorial useful please don't forget to like comment subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video